The following episode of The Time Is Now contains brief references to suicide and self-harm. Viewer discretion is advised. But most importantly, when I felt like I could not go on anymore, I would run up to that llama pasture and I would lay my head on that llama and she would lay her head on me and she would softly hum and she would bring me out of it. She kept me alive for so many years and is the only one that knew everything for the longest time because I felt comfortable talking to her because she could not tell anyone. The time is now. Welcome, my friends, to the Time Is Now podcast with Dr. Slava Shutt. I am Dr. Slava Shutt, CEO, physical therapist, entrepreneur. Here we talk to real life entrepreneurs to find out how they have individual success in their particular fields. There is no time like now. Let's go. So I want to introduce our special guest today, Caitlin Young. Caitlin Young is a business owner, author, and a wife. Caitlin's business is called Social Media Doctor LLC, where she helps people build their social media by making them authentic online. It's a pleasure to have you today. Please, Caitlin, take it away. Tell us a little bit about you and who you are. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for having me on. I appreciate it. I'm honored to be on here. Um, like you said, I'm a business owner of the Social Media Doctor LLC um, and a best-selling author of Unmasking the Greatness Within. Um, I went from Walmart manager to business owner in less than a year, and it's been a crazy ride and uh, just been a very blessed ride in the process. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. What age did you start the business and why help people with social media? So I started the business this March um, on March 3rd um, at the age of 25, almost 26. And I, you know, started the business by accident, actually. So I knew I was going to get into the business world. I was working with different entrepreneurs in a group we were in Apex. And um, the thing that kind of happened was in February, I went to an event that Stacey Rasky, um, someone we both know, held. And I basically had this moment that everything became clear. Um, I knew my purpose was to help others unmask who they were on the inside and really step into their authentic selves. And that's where social media came into play. I kept having people love what I did with my social media and wanted to emulate that. But I realized very quickly that there wasn't a service out there that was focused on representing people as authentically them, representing them as they were and not just the random quote here, the random meme there, the you know call to action there. And so I found a need that needed to be filled. And so I started the social media doctor to, you know, fix the problem, <laughs> you know, be the doctor of social media and um, basically help people be comfortable with being who they are on social media um, as they are in real life. They don't have to pretend to be someone else. The pe people want to see who they really are authentically anyway. So that's where the business started and it's grown exponentially since then. That's awesome. Doctor to doctor, I'm telling you that that's amazing. So I, I like, I like what you're doing and I like where you're headed. It, it's amazing that you're helping people. We're in apex together. So it's a great organization. I'm sure you've learned a lot. I've learned a lot. We've learned For a sure. lot of social media things to do and they work. Right. You know, Ryan's amazing. The whole Apex organization is top notch. Uh, I love plugging it and telling people that I'm part of something great and you're part of something great. So, yeah. you know, as someone who's a little more conservative and there's some other people out there. One of the one of the things that I want to know is, you know, can you explain how to use third gender language? And do you think 
incorporating third gender language increases response and posts? So the way I approach it is, you know, it has to be the views of the person that I'm representing and usually they have to align with me. I have a very, um, you know, view of, you know, love is love and all that. And, you know, you respect who people are. So like, I don't have a problem with it, but like, um, you know, basically if a person is wanting to be represented as they or there, you represent them that way, right? You have to respect that, that's them. And, um, you know, you don't care about what people are gonna say. You don't care about, you know, how people are gonna feel about it because at the end of the day, it's being authentic, right? Being who you are. And if at the heart, you're not like sure, you know, you, like you're in the middle or, you know, whatever gender or non-gender you are, the thing is, is at the end of the day, you know, you own that. And I think that it's important to represent that online and represent that wherever you're at, you know, why hide it online if you want to be that, right? Exactly, exactly. Be who you are, be yourself, and whatever you decide that is best for you and how you present yourself, so be it. Exactly. But at least your authentic self. So you seem very outgoing. I've seen some of your posts. I've seen your videos. You love coloring your hair and styling. What inspires you to do certain styles or different colors? Um, actually, for a while, it was finding myself again. Um, and then sometimes it's health issues too. Like I'll lose my hair and uh, I have to like, you know, basically, um, uh, you know, redo everything. And, um, cause I have Crohn's disease and multiple other things going on. But, um, thank you for the, being here. Oh yeah, no, I'm an open book. <laughs> and so, but the main thing was, is like, you see my style change over time because I was finding myself. The whole reason I wrote Unmasking the Greatness Within is it's my story of un taking each phase of my mask off because I know what it's like to be that person that pretends to be everyone else but themselves because they're ashamed of who they are. And so once I realized by taking that mask off and being able to be who, you know, I'm called to be, um, you know, and who, you know, because I believe in God, who I believe God calls me to be, and be the person I was meant to be, that is when real success of being around people that I align with happen, things that, um, you know, seem to be just lined up easier. Uh, I mean, we all have struggles still and all that, but it's easier to handle because I'm who I am and I don't have to remember which lie I was hanging off of, right? It is very powerful what you just said. You know, having a strong belief in a force greater than you. We as human beings, sometimes we get into this ego state that we are the ultimate force. We're not. We're not the ultimate force. We're not the ultimate knowledge. We're not the ultimate anything. There is a higher power and pulling a lot of strings. We do have free choice. And that was very, very powerful. So you mentioned that you're an author. Would you be able to tell us what your book, Unmasking the Greatest Within, the story of the llama girl is all about? Like, give us some, give us some nitty gritty. Give us the nuts and bolts and the details. You mentioned it as a grander scale. Let's get into llama girl. Absolutely. So basically, it's the story of me. Um, you know, the raw and real parts, the parts that I don't want any, didn't want anyone else to see because you know, you'd think the world would judge you. And I'm like, here we go. We're just going to throw it out there. And um, I was, when I was younger, I had a moment that I thought basically my parents didn't love me when I was six because I had been bitten in the eye by a dog. And I was at my cousin's house and I didn't know, but they would not let me talk to my parents. And so this, they said that they were busy and stuff like that. But the reality was my parents didn't know what was going on. But as a kid being impressionable, 
I took it as I wasn't important enough for my parents to come find me. So for the rest, that set my mind up for the rest of basically my life, you know, for the longest time thinking I was the lowest sibling on the six sibling totem pole. And uh, six of you. I base, there's six of us. Yep. And so in the back of my mind, I was always trying to be the perfect child, have no issues. I was pretending to come up with stories, coming up with all these lies and stuff to, you know, get my parents' attention to, you know, make sure that there was no issues in Caitlinville, right? And um, when my parents or siblings would fight, things like that, I'd take the younger siblings and, you know, protect them and tell them stories, things like that, you know, to make everybody happy. My whole purpose was making everybody else happy because I was a piece of trash in my mind. And so basically, you know, the first time I tried to end my life was 13. Um, And I tried multiple times after that, I got into overeating, I got into self harm, I did all the things. And, um, you know, most people looking from the outside would not have seen that because, um, you know, I grew up very conservative in a very Catholic family, um, you know, very um, upbeat, everything was perfect from the outside. And so I tried to keep that image and um so when I turned 18 you know I didn't want anything to fall on my parents so I immediately took over my phone bill immediately took over all the responsibilities that you know most of my siblings didn't you know take over till they were older than that but I wanted no reason for my parents to have to worry about paying for anything for me because I did not think I deserved the help it wasn't until I was two years into marriage, I got married when I was 21, that I had my big breakdown. And it it landed me in a mental institute for six weeks on and off. And I, the only reason I was there is because my husband caught the signs of me basically saying goodbye, or else I would not be here today, if he did not catch that sign. Um, I was basically had said goodbye to all my parents, had wrote notes, the whole works. And um, he knew something was wrong that morning going to work because I was too happy because I was so excited to be done with life. And once he realized that we got help, stuff like that, I kept doing the thing where I, you know, would think I was better, right? And then end up right back there because, you know, that's what I did. And it wasn't until I started putting myself back in that I realized, wait, I thought I was done with life. Why am I putting myself back in? And I had this moment where I basically was like, if I was not meant to be here, God would have taken me already. And I still have a purpose I have to fulfill here. And so I need to figure out what that is. And that is why I'm here. So that started me on a journey of, you know, basically getting my mental health back on track, got out of factory work because I was in factory work for the longest time. And then I basically, you know, took it from there and um, went into Walmart, you know, and I felt like I had kind of failed doing that because, you know, I was basically backtracking in salary and everything. But I got my mental health back on track. I lost over a hundred pounds. Um, I was at 340 at that point. Um, now I'm at like 250. So a little bit off again, but we're Great. getting back on track. And then, um, you know, the next thing it was career. So, you know, I joined <laughs> the, you know, uh, this insurance agency and they got me into Apex and then I joined Wiley and then I went to this event and started my company and here we are that is amazing i mean what a journey that you've been through and you know most people when they're faced with this many challenges have quit a lot of people go into a shell they usually don't turn the negative into a positive and you're still in this journey and you're still in this work progress And 
you're very candid and open. How do you stay so open? And did you work with coaches or mental health professionals? Can you comment a little bit about, you know, yeah. what the turnaround was? Yeah. So I still work <laughs> with a psychiatrist. Um, I was diagnosed with something called borderline personality. And, um, you know, that's a label that I didn't believe at first because I was like, you know, I'm not, I thought like anyone that had some kind of mental illness, it was their fault. Like, you know, there's such a label of if you have a mental illness, you're cuckoos, you're nuts, you know, there's, you, you know, you're never going to do big things. And for the longest time, I believed that, you know, that it took me a year to finally grasp that I could move on from that. And when I decided to move forward, it was because I had gotten my faith. Faith was a big part of that. Gotten my faith back on track. And then I had, you know, been seeing a counselor, seeing a therapist. Um, you know, I'm still on one medication. And, you know, I don't see that as a weakness. I see it as a strength because I decided to go and get the help I needed. You know, a lot of times we let pride hold us back from those things. And so being able to say it's okay to get that help so that way we can move on is okay. Same with the weight loss. I got the gastric sleeve because I knew from prior experience that I needed a little bit of a boost. And the thing is, is I would not trade doing that either because I proved myself I could do it beforehand by losing 40 pounds before on my own. And so I knew that by giving myself that little bit of boost, I was going to be able to go further. Um, but really, it came down to um, my big acceleration growth was when I joined Apex. Um, you know, being surrounded by so many like minded individuals, people that didn't judge and, you know, just took you basically by the hand and was like, here, we're going to throw all this knowledge at you was a huge, huge um, win for me. That's amazing, amazing. You have a great story. You have a great head on your shoulders. You're, you're tough. You keep on going. And that's what entrepreneurship, perseverance is all about. You, you definitely represent what winning looks like, which is a big motto of Apex. You do the work. You you're accountable. You, you know wh what you're all about. You know who you are. You, you've definitely unmasked and you've gone through those layers. That, that's, that's awesome. But why do you call yourself Llama Girl and how do you relate to the Llama? So another reason why I'm still here is because of the Llama. Um, we moved from Detroit, Michigan to a little town called Lake Odessa when I was 10. And I did not tell anyone what was going on with me except for this llama named Midori. It was my neighbor's llama. I went up there, you know, and she had invited us up. And there was this llama that, you know, basically was not known to be friendly. And I went up to this llama, you know, the rest were friendly and all that. But I went up to this llama and gave her a hug and she hugged me back. The owner was completely shocked. And at that point, I knew I had a soul bond with this animal. And so for the next 10 years, we basically worked hard together and, um, you know, showed in um, competitions throughout the state, uh, you know, doing llama obstacle courses and all sorts of different things. And um, but most importantly, when I felt like I could not go on anymore, I would run up to that llama pasture. And I would lay my head on that llama and she would lay her head on me and she would softly hum and she would bring me out of it. She kept me alive for so many years and is the only one that knew everything for the longest time because I felt comfortable talking to her because she could not tell anyone. So cool. And so it was, she was basically my best friend because I was homeschooled. 
Um, so I didn't, I had a few friends, but th none of them lived close. Um, they were back in Detroit, you know, where we had used to live. And um, I just felt, found comfort in llamas and in animals. And um, it just became my safe spot. So a lot of me broke again when I had to make the decision to put her down when I was 19. That's kind of when I reverted back to my bad habits because um, I basically lost half of me. <laughs> wow. Wow. Uh, amazing. And since, you know, you have this spiritual connection, connection with animals, you connect with the llama. If you were to say, Dr. Slava, this is your animal character. What animal character would you describe me as? Ooh, um, I would say either a, I am torn between a dog and a parakeet for some reason. Right. Um, but I'm That's not exactly sure. <laughs> That's yeah, awesome. I, I, yeah. Color for parakeet. I love it. I love it. So you, you present yourself so confidently. I'm curious, did you, did your, in this size, in decisiveness and career choice before creating your business push you forward or do you think it weighed you down too much in life at that moment i so i had like a vision of where i was going to kind of go but i did not believe in myself or see myself as worthy um of believing in myself if that makes sense i felt so I, I did not like myself. I hated myself. And so anytime I'd get a good idea or, you know, think that I should do something, I'd do the opposite on purpose because I despised myself so much. Yeah. And, you know, I always had a passion for helping others. Um, I just didn't know how it was going to shape. And I think it helped me grow to not have made a choice earlier on because I may, you know, I think everything happens for a reason. And um, I think it happens when it's supposed to happen. And so I think, you know, it all led to the same spot. That's awesome. So by forming your own business, did you stumble upon a new sense of confidence? What would you say to people who want to start a business? Like, what would be your, your how? Um, so I would definitely encourage you gain in a mastermind, you know, Apex, um, any kind of group that you can to learn as much as you can. And then also don't be afraid to just go all in. I knew nothing. <laughs> like I knew stuff from Apex, but like, I literally had to Google how to file an LLC and <laughs> like basically, you know, played pretend for a minute. But once I figured it out, you know, it made sense. Um, I actually just got approved for my second business um, this week. So it's going to be um, an adventure even more so um, because it's just, you know, there's no, no reason not to is my point. You only have one life and why are you going to wait until it's too late to take the action when you can take the action today and say sorry instead of regretting? Well. Wow. What is your biggest challenge in business? My biggest challenge is definitely that I am still learning. I'm young. Um, you know, a lot of people see my age and they're like, oh, she's only 26. And uh, she, even the, oh, she's a woman card comes up. And it's funny because I've literally denied someone service because they said that. <laughs> um, and the thing is, is that, you know, just, because someone looks different or you know is different or a different age than you expect doesn't mean that they don't know or haven't been through stuff you know I think a lot of misconception is so many people think millennials don't have their stuff together they don't know what they're doing and um, they don't know me right they don't know my story and I, I don't know everything but I definitely know more than the average 26 year old when it comes to leaning in and going through stuff <laughs> oh, yeah. so um you know it, it's just uh misconceptions that people have and they don't realize till they get to know you you have you know express you've expressed 
some of the negative things that have happened to you, the challenges. As the social media doctor, how would you doctor somebody who is starting off with this social media stuff and runs into some criticism and some people who are negative? Because you don't seem to care. You seem to be pretty confident. But somebody that you're coaching or that you're working with doctoring, what would you say to them when they experience some social media negativity? So I would tell them what I told myself, which is, you know, any interaction is good interaction. So, you know, the fact that you have haters means that they're watching you, right? They are keeping their eye on you and they're actually jealous of you. That means that they actually, you know, want to be like you. They just don't want to say it out loud because they aren't as confident as you as to go and, you know, basically shout to the world of who you are, right? And, um, you know, that took me a long time too. And honestly, it took a lot of mirror work. I would uh, write, it comes down to self-worth and I wrote positive affirmations on my mirror with a, you know, dry erase marker every morning and uh, would change it every day. And at first I felt so weird saying it to myself and like writing it. But after, you know, a year of doing it, I got excited to go in there and be like, okay, what am I going to come up with today? You know, and uh, it definitely is a mindset shift. So I always encourage people to do the inner work and work on their mindset. And I help them with that. And then, you know, it's easier to portray yourself online. Positive mindset is so important. We talk about this on the show. You're, no matter what field you're in, no matter what kind of entrepreneur you are, it is so important to have a positive mindset. If you think you can, you can. It sounds cliche, but it's true. Positivity transcends all major fears, anxieties, and problems. Action, action, and positivity will head in a really good direction. So Agreed. I noticed through your Instagram that you actually went through and tattooing FYE on you. What I did. Yep. It's was, right here. Nice. How was that debate? How long did it take you to like sit there and think about, should I do this? Should I not? Like, you know, <laughs> you know like, um, you're going to laugh. Tell us the process of the FYE tattoo. And so, for people who don't know what that stands for, give it to us. Okay, so it means fuck your excuses. Bam. And um, basically, the funny part is, is I got that tattooed before I knew what Apex was. Really? Um, so I was working in the insurance agency and the owner, um, Lori Jewett and Devin Carr, they had it tattooed and they told me what it meant. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I need that on my arm. Because, you know, I'm always like having that, you know, wake up, I don't want to get up, I just want 10 minutes of sleep, right? Like, and so that FYE, I look down, I'm like, Oh, my gosh, I have to do this, you know, <laughs> like, it's a constant reminder for me. That's why it's on my wrist, because it's the first thing I see. Um, but I basically just went into a tattoo parlor. And, uh, you know, was like, let's do this. <laughs> And uh, then I found out later it was from Apex and I'm like, oh, this is awesome. I already got the starter pack. That's amazing. Awesome. That, that's so cool. So if you could live in any fictional world, what would it be? Um, if I could live in any fictional world, it would be Doctor Strange, like the Marvel Universe. I am a huge Marvel fan, so I would definitely be in that universe and uh, be trying that magic out. <laughs> Nice. You like open up different worlds, different dimensions, you know, oh, keep yeah. some people out and keep some people mm -hmm. in. Uh, isn't there a, a new Thor movie coming out too? Yes, I just saw that. It is so good. Is it? That's it. Mm -hmm. That's it. If you if the if the social media doctor recommends it, I'm going to see Thor. I'm taking my kids. I'm going to see Thor. And Dasha Strange movie is pretty cool too, right? Oh my gosh. Yes. Yes. It, it definitely, 
I, I as soon as they come out, I'm like in that theater. I'm like the biggest Marvel geek, and uh, that's like something me and my husband go do together. Like we we just go and watch those every time. So, do you like? all of them or are you particularly just with like you you like dr strange like what wh- give us your your like your your top list of those of all the marvels so i love all the marvel movies i am actually more into the comics themselves okay. um like i like the version where hank pym ant-man is the same age as you know, Iron Man and stuff like that. They did it a little different in the movies. So I'm a little bit anti Ant Man movie, going to be honest, guys. Um, um, but, uh, you know, I honestly love it all. Like, I just, if there's a Marvel movie, I'm there, I'm seeing it. That's just how it is. Like, we, we always block off that night. And that's something as an entrepreneur I love because I wasn't able to do that at my other jobs, right? Like, I'm my own boss. So I can be like, well, See you guys. <laughs> I'm gonna go take this hour. Awesome. You are the Apex Avenger. We're gonna make you an <laughs> honorary Avenger. You are you are Dr. Social Media with the special powers to help people with their social media needs. So there we go. How could people find you? Tell us, plug yourself right now. What's the easiest and best way how they can find you and let us all know who you are. So the easiest way is just going to my website, socialmediadoctorllc.com. Um, I have my links to my social there. I have all that there. There's, um, you know, info about me, my employees, all that. Um, easiest way. Uh, and then if you were to look for my book, that's on Amazon and it's just Unmasking the Greatness Within. That's amazing. I recommend all of you to go getting to get it peel away all your layers, you know, you are strong, you are deep, you have a lot of layers to you, you're doing great work, we commend you for going through your challenges, not everybody could do it, so you're an inspiration to the young audience, and to the older audience, and to anybody between, because you've been there, you've done that, and in a short period, you've overcome some challenges, and obstacles and you just keep moving forward and fye so thank you you. give us some last words before you go and anything that you want to say to the audience um i think everything comes down to integrity um is my biggest thing and you know when you're authentic with yourself you're living a life of integrity so when you have to make a decision or you have to pivot just always lean back on that whether is this in integrity or is this compromising that making that your um decision maker is huge it makes life so much easier and it makes it almost so you don't have to think about it you automatically have a gut feeling of what you're doing thank you for being candid thank you for sharing thank you for being vulnerable and you know talking to the audience about everything that you've been through. Thank you so much. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe. If you're watching us, if you're listening, make sure to rate us on Apple podcasts and Spotify. Thank you for listening. The time is now. And remember to tune in every Friday, 8am. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.